ಕಂಸಚಾನೂರಮರ್ದನಂ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವಿ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಸುದೇವ ದಿ ಡೆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡೀಮನ್ಸ್ ಕಂಸೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚನೂರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಡಿಯರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾರ್ಲಿಂಗ್ of mother devaki and the world teacher sri krishna we salute him again and again om peace 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 so we are reading bhagavat we are in the 10th chapter of book 2 and verse number 1 in the previous chapter that Parikshit put so many questions about how this universe has come, how this miracle, this world is there. If Absolute One is there, how it becomes many? What is Maya? Why this Maya? All these intricate questions. Now, this chapter here, Bhagavan Shukadev is saying, going to respond to those questions one after another sometimes when you read this you will think are you reading more of a vedanta book or a bhakti book it appears that it is a bhakti book but its philosophy is so strong it is nice nothing but vedanta so here we find then this cosmic form of the lord this is the chapter head and he is talking about the 10 characteristics of this unique text bhagavat which teaches about the truth of the reality the sri shuka said <coughs> shuka dev is responding to the question of parikshit king parikshit and shukadev says this bhagavat is distinguished by the 10 subjects discussed in it atro sargo visargascha sthanam poshanam bhutaya etc what are these the 10 subjects discussed in it what are these these are one is called sarga what is visarga what is sthana there is a pushana i also uti manantara ishanu katha nirodha mukti asraya these are the ten subjects had been discussed in this book and what are these now he will explain what is out of this ten he says the great men however say that the first nine they are of these topics are only for the clarification of the tenth tenth is the concluding asraya means surrender total surrender taking refuge what is the foundation of all this creation sustenance maintenance destruction etc so the the great men however say the second verse that the first nine of these topics are only for the clarification of the 10th uh, that is the asraya the surrender upon which everything is established foundation of everything uh, so asraya meaning the supreme being that is the supreme being with the support of everything his nature is described directly in the various hymns and indirectly through the purport of the narratives so what are these the third verse says the origin of the various categories of mahatattva to the five gross elements by the laws of equilibrium in the prakriti caused by the divine will and their formation into virat rupa the cosmic form 
is called sarga. So he is explaining what is sarga. Sarga is a technical word. He says that that the mahatattva, purusha prakriti, the sankha philosophy they are bringing into the equation. The mahatattva or buddhi tattva, it is called the intelligence. And fine buddhi, mana, mind, chitta, hankara, no? Four there. And 24 principle, that is the sankha philosophy. 24 cosmic principle coming in contact with purusha, they get agitated and they manifest. So here, the origin of the various categories of mahatattva. What is the origin of mahatattva? To the five gross elements. Many five gross elements means air, water, fire, space, and uh, how to live, earth. So the five elements. These five elements gross, here we see, to the subtle five elements. Uh, Pancho again into the five sense organs, five gross objects, five subtle objects, and five bishai, uh, pancha, bishaya, five sense organs, gross uh, action, organs of action, five organs of knowledge, perception, five, five, ten, five elements, gross elements, air, water, etc. Five subtle elements, what we enjoy in our dream. They are also drinking water, they are also fire, they are also space, they are also earth, we see everything. So these are the five. So the five times four is twenty. And Mahatattva is buddhi, eh? manabuddhi. Sometimes they call manabuddhi, sometimes they call manabuddhi jitta hankara. This four. This 4 plus 20, these are jada, according to Sankhu. They cannot function. Like it is in the woven, they give the example, uh, potato, rice, water, you mix everything. But nothing will come um, function unless the heat behind. Heat does not do anything, heat is there. But, uh, and that heat transmits into everything and the pan becomes hot. Then the rice, water become hot. Heat is not the intrinsic power of the pan, the rice, the water, the potato, or whatever. These 24 principles, they are by nature jada, inert. <coughs> but in touching, in contact with the purusha, the consciousness, here Vedanta will say it is the cosmic Atman, the Brahman, that is the Ashraya. We will come to that conclusion. But what he says here, the origin of the various categories, from Mahatattva to the five gross elements, Bhutas, by the loss of equilibrium, why it happens? As Prakriti, the nature, loses its equilibrium. When it is in equilibrium, perfect, no creation. Disruption comes, then creation starts. So this its formation, the Bhutas by the loss of equilibrium of the Prakriti, why it happens? By it is called the divine will, D capital, W capital. And that their formation into Birat or Rupo is called Sargo. It is individually I am talking. Now if you take it for the cosmic reality, the cosmic universe is created by the cosmic mind, cosmic intelligence, cosmic memory, cosmic, uh, the space of the cosmic nature, the earth, stars, galaxies, everything is created. What is the, individually, as I am given the example, it is the pot, one pot, individual pot. Behind is the sankho, uh -huh, consciousness. That's why sankho and Vedanta is difference. Sankho says, each individual, we are all, uh, we have purusha, one purusha behind me, and prakriti. And purusha prakriti is interacting and manifesting in this way. But Vedanta comes to no, 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 not one purusha here, not one purusha there, not one purusha there. It's only one consciousness. That's the bohu purusha to unified principle. That is the Vedanta. It's, Vedanta stands on the foundation of this principle of 
Sankha. So here he is giving, talking about the Sankha, the whole Sarga. Sarga means this creation, this cosmic creation. What we see in the physical level, the stars, galaxies, the earth, the plan, planet, earth, the plant, human being, anything we see, this is all created by this 24 principle, starting from the buddhi, mahatatta, down to the gross earth, the gross elements, five elements. This is all are caused, how it happened? Not your will, my will, by a divine will, the cosmic will. We call God's will. In, if we go to the bhakti school, we'll say it is God's will. <clears throat> and that is called the Birata Rupa. Birata means the cosmic form. Birat, Birata. Birata means the cosmic. And that is called the Sarga. The creation of various beings by Brahma is called Bisharga. Now, in this creation, the cosmic will, cosmic will of whom? They call God created, he's called Brahma, mind born. So that in that cosmic will, that means in Brahma, then whatever Brahma has created, the creation of various beings by Brahma, taking these five elements, 24 elements and principles, that is called the B Sarga, is it? technical Sanskrit name, Swarga, Bisharga. Swarga is the creation of multiplicity, how it came. And here you are personalizing that, that in the cosmic will, in Vedanta will say, there is I was alone, I will be many, no? The cosmic absolute Brahman was there. How did it come? They call Maya, is there another explanation? The cosmic mind wills. In my small mind, I wish something, I get something. I am successful, unsuccessful. The cosmic mind, your mind or my mind, all the minds of the universe, if you add together, God's mind, then the, the capital will. And that is called Brahma's mind. And from that, he willed and he created the universe. That's why you call Hindu mythology called Brahma is the creator God. He created. So what is Brahma actually? Mind born. What is the mind? In Brahman there is mind? Uh, that these are very tricky questions. Now anyhow, accepting this reality of the world, accepting individual personality, they are saying this is coming from that co cosmic will and that is the Brahma and that is the, it's called the Bisharga. So Sarga and Bisharga. Sarga is individually when it is coming from the Mahatattva to the gross element and here is the cosmic will creating this universe called Bisharga. Then the third, Sthana. Sthano means Stiti, means consisting in the activities of the Lord for the maintenance of the world in proper order. That means the the activities of the Lord for the maintenance of the world in proper order. The world is going on, how it should be maintained properly and perfectly. And that part is called the sthiti. Another terminology, poshana. Poshana means is granting and protecting the devotees who take shelter in him. Poshana means nurturing. And another word, sim simple Sanskrit word will be nurturing. Creation is done, but you have to nurture. Without nurturing, the baby should be nurtured to make him alive. So here also, this portion of sound is his my name, cosmic mind, Brahma's granting protection. God granting protection to whom? Here is a devotion, is injecting devotion into it. That the protection of the devotees who take shelter in him, means the cosmic will, or God. Manavatara. Manavatara means what? It means the law of righteous living as illustrated in the lives of the great ones. So, ma manantara. Manantara is the, means the law, 
the righteous living. That means creation is done, and if anyone is living well in the, according to the principle of uh, God's will, then it is called the manmantara. Uti. Uti means consists of karmic tendencies in latent and active forms. So in us, there is some karmic tendency. We are all born because of the karma. The tendency, the karmic tendency, which is, which is something potent, something manifested. Something manifested here. That's why you call the three types of karma we talk about. Accumulated karma, active, what is action, already what is started working. So, sanchito, kriyaman, and eh, prarabdha. So, three types of karma. So, here it is said that the uti, what is the uti in this technical term? It is consisted the karmic tendencies. We all carry our karmic tendencies. So, tendency forces us to go this way. Everyone's tendency guides them where their goal. So, he likes or dislikes. Our karmic tendency puts us into that situation. That's why sometimes in Hinduism they say, Oh, God did it, oh, God, it's my fate. But some say, No, you can change it. That's true. But how much we turn, it has its own tendency. We can curb it by new thinking, new thought. But we are propelling forces something. So that is the karmic tendencies. In latent form, in active form. So something yet to manifest, that is in a latent in me, some tendency, and some already manifested. So this is called the uti. Then mannanta ishanukata nirodha mukti rascha. So ishanukata, what is ishanukata? Is the description of Sri Hari's incarnations supplemented by the accounts of his devotees and their deeds. Ishanukatha means this Isha means the Lord. Anukatha means the memories, the Lila, the divine play of God. So Ishanukatha means the description of God, Srihori, and when he incarnated as human being. And not only that, they are supplemented by the accounts of his devotees. His devotees, like we do, Christ came with the devotees, of his devotees. We listen to his life and what the devotees are talking about him. Ramakrishna came. Ramakrishna's life, Ramakrishna's activities, as also the disciples talking about them who saw them. So these types of things are called Ishanukatha. At the time of cosmic dissolution, when Mahavishnu lapses into Mahajoga slumber, all jivas retaining their bodies and tendencies in the germinal condition become dissolved in him. This is called Nirodha. Nirodha means, suppose, as our, all the organs are now functioning, when you go to sleep, they get shut down. But they shut down, then they are not dead. They are still there. When you wake up, then again start where they ended. So he's, here it is said, what is called the Nirodha is a technical term. Nirodha means the, uh, the time of cosmic dissolution when this whole universe is consumed, like we go to sleep. When we go to sleep, our awareness of the awakened state, our awareness of the dream state, they all are consumed, as it were, into sleep. So the cosmic dissolution means when Lord Narayana, who is the cause of creation, he was active, the world is active. And when he goes to sleep, everything is withdrawn into him. But all the tendencies of every one of us who were in the creation, they got into the seed form, but they don't die. When again Vishnu will be woke up, this is the, according to this Bhagavata idea, when he will be waking up, then what will happen? 
this whole universe again come back. And you will be there if you are not have God realization or Brahma Jnana. You will be starting where you ended. I will be starting where I am ended. So, as if the whole activity of the cosmos gets into rest for some time. All the jivas, individual souls, they stop functioning at that point and again start working when God awakens. It is the God sleeps longer than us, no? <laughs> Very difficult to assess all these calculations. One day, one year of our living is called one day of our forefathers, no? You look at that, even in created world, one year of us and one year of a dog. How much difference? That's all relative. So, likewise, the, as you go to the subtle level and powerful, like the God in different deities, forefathers, ancestral fathers, they are behind their God, or all the devotas, and behind that the cosmic creator, ultimately we call uh, the Ishwara, the Lord. So in the Lord everything gets consumed in the perfect dissolution. That's why Noah's Ark and other in examples are given. Why? There it is said, giving a graphic description, he collected all the seeds of every, uh, every set of one, one set uh, for the creation, future creation. And then when the new creation comes, there it manifests from that. So we all get consumed in whatever our mental tendency, capacity, we, with our all tendencies, we go back there and then we come out again in the next uh, creation period or, or when God wakes up. Eh? It is everyday's action. Suppose our everyday, we go to bed, we wake up. So God also, is sorrow, is considered like human. When he's working, his one day, his millions and millions and of years or billions of years calculation is there. If you go to some calculation, a huge calculation, one day of Vishnu is how long? And then it's one day, then he goes to sleep. Again, night time is also so long. Again, when you wake up, everything is waking up. And then it goes on for one, and he lives for 100 years. So he always gets deep sleep. Now you have to dream sleep. I probably not. <laughs> yes, that's true. Probably uh, getting up, and I think he, maybe, I do not know. <laughs> we have not read that. So, so he says here that this is called the Nirodha. And what is called mukti? Not that all are bound slow, souls like us, that we will have to live on. But when you got realization here, you know the truth, you know with wisdom, you have overcome all these limitations, then you are called mukta or nirodha. Muktam, that is the nirodha is sleep, going to sleep. Mukti is another. What is Mukti? Mukti is the jiva's abidance in the pristine state, abandoning all entanglements in the form foreign to his nature. So when Mukti or liberation or Nirvana, this is the time when he is not entangled into these 24 principles, neither entangled by the karma or propensities, he has cut the bond of everything, he will have not to come back again. That is the mukti state. He out of whom the universe, including the jivas, emerge at creation, he, that means the Ishwara, the Lord, out of whom the universe, including this, all the jiva, individual souls, like we are all jivas, the plants, animals, everything which is created, bhu, bhu means out of which creation comes. So all the living animated objects emerges at the time of creation in whom they are held in the abeyance after dissolution. He, called by such names as Brahman and Paramatman, is Asraya. Huh? So all this creation, what we are talking about, 
it is out of whom it has come. He is the Lord of the universe. And it is now creation. It stands, dissolves into it, and again recreates. That ground on which everything settles, that is called the last, well, we call Brahman, we call Paramatman, and in technically it is called Asraya. Asraya means support. This I am, my Asraya is the floor. I am sitting with a chair here, no? If the floor is not there, then I could not sit here. So what is my Asraya? The floor. So what is the Asraya of the entire cosmic creation? God, the Absolute. Satchidananda, Parabrahman. That's why he is named in different language, Brahman, Paramatman, etc. What is Adhatmika? Adhatmika means related to this. Adhatmika means that is the spirit that feels identified with the body and its sense organs like eyes is none other than the Adi Bhutiko, that is the spirit whose manifestation the presiding deities over the senses or adittas are. Oh my God. Uh, so I am identifying with this body, no? But there is one God in Hinduism. These are concepts. He identifies all the lights of the universe. Aditya. Aditya is the sun. Sun is not material sun. There is the material part. There, but there is one divine part it's called the God. We call Hindu gods. That's why Hindu gods are so many. Behind everything, they find one God. All gods supported by one God. That's called Ishara. And that Ishara is supported by Brahman. So it is categorically divided this way. The, the creation is done in this pattern. So that is the Bhagavat's opinion. It, op it gives the opinion. Adhatmik means this body, I think this is my hand, my eyes, this and that. Okay, this is Adhatmik. Adhatmik is not different than the Adi, uh, uh, Adi Bhautik, Adi Doivik, regarding the Devotas. What are the Devotas? Devotas mean gods. That's why behind the rain, rain there is called Boruna God. Behind the sun, Aditya God, the God Aditya. The different names of cosmic principles controlled by not by only it is not nature is not doing Hindus have always create ultimately Brahman in one word if you say Brahman everything is gone but no they made a division that all this that's why um, Indra is worshipped to give rain uh, in, the, in the Vedic prayers we find oh Indra don't destroy us give us rain give us sustenance that means he's the god of rain some is God of fire, God of wealth, God of education. That's why everywhere they put some conscious entity behind that, thinking and personalize them. And that personalize are divine entities. We are physical entities. I am connecting in me someone who is connecting with this hand, eyes, ears, my eyes, my pin. I identify here. Similarly, as, as the president of this country, identifies with the whole country, U.S., no? It is my country. He identifies not with one particular area, but entire area is my area. So as I understand, my head to toe is me, I. This is individual. That's why his name is Adhyatmik, Odhi Atmik, related to me. Similarly, there is Odhi Daibik, there are gods, territorial area is there. So someone is departmental in charge of one segment of the natural power which is working. So they are called Adhi Daivi. That is Adhi Daivi is the spirit whose manifestation, the presiding deities over the senses like Aditya, etc. And the physical body which renders possible this distinction between the individual spirit and the presiding deities is Adi Bhautik. So three types of things are there, Adhyatmik, the, what some consciousness in me, thinking I am this body, identifying with my eyes, ears, all the all limbs. Similarly, in, the, in a godly level, 
there are some divine entities who are controlling some departments of the creation. They are called Adi Bhautik and Adi Doivik. Adi Doivik and Adi Bhautik means Bhutas, the created element, elemental, who controls the elements. Physical body which renders possible this distinction between the individual spirit and the presiding deity. There is some connection between individual me and gods. So this relationship, there is the bhuta, they call adi bhuti. Anyhow, these are very complicated idea. We're just reading because the book says so, to understand a little bit. Ah, our main thing, love God. <laughs> Ninth verse, in the absence of any one of these, the others, any one of these, the others cannot con be conceived. So you cannot think of uh, the body-related con uh, concept without thinking some divine entity behind all the bodies. And you cannot conceive all the bodies that the divine entities without giving up, without connecting with the physical and the bhutas, the created objects in the universe. That means one is interdependent on the other. That is, you know, he's making it little understandable, that is the individualized intelligence, individualized intelligence, your intelligence, my intelligence, which is thinking me only in the body, mind, etc., or my things. The powers of the senses constituting its end instruments, and the body that provides the field together. And any one of them cannot be conceived in isolation. Therefore, he who in, is the witness of all these three, that is, in whose presence they manifest, is the asraya or the support. And he himself has no other support. He is the support of all. You may question, Asha, everyone is supported by this cosmic uh, reality. Eh? Who supports him? Well, that question does not come. He is the ultimate support. There is no support of him. Sve mahimni jadivana mahimni iti, Upanishad says, he is existing in his own glory. Then own glory? Where did he get the glory? Oh, I am, I am, Upanishad says, oh, I, I, I told you the word in his own glory. Forget, forget me. It is no glory. It is in, he is the only reality. Glory and he, we are making two. He and his glory. There is no he and his glory. It is that. That's that it is Brahman. So ultimately, you are saying so many things. We make Vedanta very easy, you know? because we don't go into details, but uh, these scriptures always make our brain work a little harder to go step by step in between steps. How to relate with this body, my intelligence, my consciousness, reflected consciousness, my physical element, my energy uh, element. So what are the relations and how they are working together by a cosmic ground of consciousness? So that is the consciousness. So we have read verse up to nine, nine verses. Now Narayana, who is Narayana? The Lord in, 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 in this book, it is called Krishna, it's called Narayana. Narayana is a four-armed god. Uh, it is with, with Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, with a mace in hand, Arki, uh, Sankho. The conch shell, shankha, chakra, the disc, shankha, chakra, gada, the mace, and padma, the lotus, holding in four arms this as a symbol of creation, sustenance, and protection. So this Narayana, who is this Narayana? When the cosmic person break, broke upon the universal cell and come out, he desired to have a place for himself to stay. <laughs> he was one. He wanted to be many. And when he broke into a personality, so he wanted to stay somewhere. And for this, he created the pure and uncontaminated water known as seminal water, garbhudakam. Hmm? 
So he created, that's why we find that Narayana is lying in the ocean with a big serpent on, uh, on that serpent, he's lying uh, comfortably there with his hood of the serpent protecting him. No? So this is the idea that he desired when he burst out to be many, he first created himself and placed him in a uncontaminated water which is known as seminal waters. That cosmic person lay for several thousands of years in those cosmic waters created by himself. So he created the cosmic water, ocean, and he created himself and he was there in that condition for a long period. Therefore, he is called Narayana. Why is called Narayana? One who rests on Nara or water. Narayana, why is called Narayana? Because one who rests on Nara means Nara Ayana. Ayana means the goal. The Nara water, on the water platform, he is resting there. Yeah? And water is called Nara to signify that which is born of Nara or the Lord. The substance like the earth, that from form, the material cause of the universe. The substance like the earth, that form the material cause of the universe. The instrumental causes like karma, time and nature and jiva, who is the enjoyer, all are what they are because of his will. So you find now individually how the individuals are coming. Well, you see then God created I shall be many. And many came up. His will is so powerful, the creation starts immediately. So when he created, what happened? The substance like the earth, five element, earth, water, air, fire, or material cause of the, they are the material cause of the universe with the matter. Uh, two things are necessary, material cause and efficient cause. This is a Vedantic term. Material cause, suppose this table. The table is made of wood, glue, polish, nails, other things. But there is another person, only you collect all these items, it does not make a table. You need a carpenter. So someone with intelligence worked on them. That is called the, one is the matter, that's called the material cause. Another is called the efficient cause. Efficient cause is the carpenter. If the carpenter is not there, the things will not be made. Or if the carpenter is only there, there is no matter. He cannot create out of emptiness something. So both are needed. So nimitta karan and upadana karan. In Sanskrit called upadana means the material cause and nimitta is the cause for which, by which intelligence, some intelligent person or some intelligent being to create the creation. So in this earth, also in this creation, you say the material part is there and one intelligent part is there. So he says here in this verse number 15 <coughs> that Mm, no, uh, the cosmic person, uh, the substance, uh, the substance like the earth that form the material cause of the universe, and the instrumental cause, like that karma. What are the instrumental cause? There is earth element are all there, but the instrumental cause is the karma, individuals, karmic relationship, the time, nature and individual soul, jiva, who is enjoying. This creation is for enjoyment. Who is enjoying? We enjoy. Who is that we? It is a jiva, individual soul. In me, there is someone who identifies with this body, mind, and senses, and then enjoy the world. So this enjoyer, that enjoyer is the jiva. And this nature, material nature, and the, in time it is created, in time it is destroyed, in time it is getting its 
expression and in dissolution and the karma these are called the, uh, the instrumental cause so two causes one is the material cause matter and another is the instrumental cause what are those karma time nature and individual soul who is the enjoyer all are what they are because of his will all this function is going on because cosmic will god willed i will be many and he be reflected as it were he became many one ocean and then one ocean water is becoming in the ripples and bubbles and infinite number of ripple bubble etc but they are because of his whose will all the bubbles and ripples and waves because of the ocean the cosmic will of god created this infinite number of being and there are individual souls and there is a the material part time is there functioning nature is functioning the karma is blowing the wind of karma the blowing wind no that creates the waves in direction of the waves are all controlled by the tendency so karma tendency all these are going on and what they are because of his will h capital his will and they cease to be when his will is otherwise so all this creation is going on it is by his will it is working and when he does not will everything stops so here what is bringing into our awareness whatever vedantic thought you can think whatever way the world created it is by the cosmic will of god ah let there be light and there was light ah so it is his will whatever he wills it happens that's why ramakrishna said even the leaf does not move without his will h capital is god's will uh, we think that i am doing i am thinking i i i but it is all the individuals are by his will they came up as jiva there is matter there is karma time etc etc all put together like the table the wood and nail and glue and other things polish and other things material and the intelligent person is the carpenter so similarly this individual things are all there but also in intelligence is added this intelligence is the will of the cosmic will by the cosmic will everything is going on and everything is resting on him and him alone 13 bars the one desiring to be many rose from the bed of yoga slumber eh? that the narayan was sleeping and he suddenly felt oh i'm alone i'll be many i want to be many so 13 bars on page 135 the one desiring to be many rose from his bed of yogic slumber he is he was in slumber but that slumber is yogic slumber he is tuned to his inner consciousness as 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 example we can understand it is like ramakrishna going into deep ecstasy it is very difficult to come down from there so narayana was in that mood do he desire i will be many ramakrishna is to say i shall drink water i shall have some sweets no but there is a feeble word it's in a high plane to come down it takes time landing of the plane it takes long time to land the plane huh? so their mind comes down so he says this you are still to yoga yogic slumber he divided his illu luminous seed birjam hirannam he divided his luminous seed capital into three by his will these three divisions are adi daiva adhyatma and adhi bhuta we have talked about that adhyatma means related to the human adhi daiva related to the gods and goddesses celestial beings and adhi bhuta relating to the material thing so three things are 
can be distinctly understood that the material things are necessary, 24 cosmic principles we have talked about at the beginning, that question was given that all the Panchabhutas, etc., etc., these are material, that is called the Adi Bhuta, and Adi Dayu Adhyatma, Adhyatma is the human perspective, and Adi Daiva is the divine or the celestial part. So it has one divided into three strings, Adhyatmic, related to the human, Adi Daivik, related to the gods and goddesses, celestial beings, and Adi Atma, no, Adi, ha, Adi Bhuta, material, matter. Uh, matter means five material objects. Uh, the uh, earth material, sun, uh, heat material, water material, space material, like that. Here, how the one seed was divided into many. Now they are entering into again the how these different three aspects have been divided in this way. More description of that. Verse number 15. Question? That is muskil, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> okay, shall, shall we end there? One. One question or two? two Only two questions. Yeah, difficult question. Difficult question. <laughs> okay, tell it later, read little bit, then <laughs> difficulty will go away. <laughs> okay, so the three aspects. So 15 verses. From the space in the heart of the cosmic being, thus activi activized arrows, sense of power, vajaha mental power, saha, and physical power, bala. Now you have to accept all these things. How it happens, I do not know. He says, from the space in the heart of the cosmic being, Narayana, who created the entire universe, was sleeping in his slumber, from his heart came three things. What? The arose the sense power, the power of the senses. All the eyes, ears, all the senses. They got their power. It's called the Oja. Mental power. We'll do this. In our mind, we are thinking that Oja, and that's the Shaha. And the physical power, three powers. One is the sense power, another is the power of the mind, another is the power of the physical body. So one is called Oja, Saha, and Bala. From these subtle powers was produced the prana. This prana which is flowing, it has been created out of these three. The gate sutratma, that's the cosmic, it is the breathing of the Lord. In that we are all included. It's the cosmic, we are the individual. Or the collective self running through all the threads through braids, beads. When the collective self works, that means cosmic, God works, the active tendency in all individuals, beings, is roused. So when he is breathing, we all breathe, we all awake. When he is dull and inactive, all beings to become so. Huh? See, we can say that in our body, say, huh? according to medical science, what? When we are active, all the cells and are all active. When you to get to bed, bed and sleep, there they are, they don't die, but they become resting. Because I am resting, they are resting. And just to understand about the cosmic play, how it is going on. When he is dull and inactive, all beings to become so. It is just like the followers of a king following the king. 17 verse. When the vital energy becomes active, the cosmic person felt, felt hunger and thirst. Uh, when the breathing comes and then wake up, more normally what we do? Just it is humanizing, humanizing the uh, cosmic play. When we wake up, after a whole night's sleep, we feel hungry, thirsty. So similarly, when the vital energy becomes active within, the cosmic person, he felt hunger 
and thirst. When hunger and thirst are generated, he developed a face. How to eat? He created a face. In the face, the region called Talu organized and it came up to Juha, a tongue and throat. These are all descriptions given to make us understand how the cosmic personality is developing by his own will and we become a part of it. Then were produced several tests like sweetness which the tongue could grasp. Then its object is created, tasteful food, sweet, sour, etc. Boruna, the presiding deity of the tongue. See, the, the, see this is the India. <laughs> the tongue has a presiding deity. We hear no in the story <coughs> that that man who killed a cow and when the emissary of the death came and tried to catch him, he said, I didn't do anything. Why are you catching me? I'm a Brahmin. I didn't do anything. But who did? But my hand did. Well, your hand did? You, your hand? Well, no, my hand is not controlled by me. A hand's God is Indra. Go and catch him. So the emissary of death went to the Lord. Eh? And he said, what? Well, you kill the cow, so it's, it's demerit will come to you. So you have to be punished. Let us go. We are uh, emissaries of death. He said, okay, give me some time. That's why Ramakrishna stood, you know, he came down and the God came down and the beautiful garden, the um, Brahmin has prepared and he started praising, oh, this is a beautiful rose, a beautiful Gardalia. Wow, 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 where did you get it? It's huge, exceptional, I never saw. And when praise came, then he said, Brahmin, he said, it is I did, I brought it. I did it. Everywhere, I, I, I. Then Indra got his own divine form. Said, hey, all good things you did by your hand, and only bad thing when I did is my, I have done. You have to take the responsibility of both. Go to, go to the <laughs> Jama's house now. So this means Hindu idea is there, the hand is your hand, but there is a cosmic controller of all the hands, cosmic controller of the tongue, Cosmic controller of your uh, mouth. This, 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 the concept is given there. So, Boruno, the presiding deity of the tongue, was also produced. Thus, Rishthano, or sit, Indriyo, or organ, Vaishya, or the object of perception, and the Devata, or the presiding deity of each Indriyo, were generated in all succeeding cases too. So, one by one, all the in a, say, organs were created and correspondingly their controlling God or deity is created and he is the boss of all creation. From the face of all, of that all-powerful being who desired to speak, arose the organ of speech, the faculty of speech and its presiding deity, Banhi or fire. That's why he called fire, when Bak, the speech is considered with the fire because it, it has some power inside. You say a word, every word has a fire in it. You say some strong word, uh, it has a reaction in others' mind. Where they get the fire? As if your words are creating some fire. Your words also have a same energy when it is sweet word, has a sweet effect. So they are saying it is the energy is the fire behind that. Banni, they call the fire, every behind the speech. For long he remained in the water with his breath obstructed. When the breath was agitated within, the nose of the releasing it was formed. So when the breath is started, the so breathing should be there, so nose came. Along with it, air came, the conveyor of smell. As for the presiding deity, Bayu came. When he desired to smell, the sense of smell arose, centered in nose. It is not the nose only, but the sense organ is necessary to perceive the smell. So, you know how the creation is coming, he is describing. When he, would, he could not see himself, 
and the desire to see himself and others arose in him. The eyes are originated along with that the presiding deity of the sun, Surya, and the objects are formed and the organs of... So, eye is created and what will you do with the eye if there is no object to see? So he created this object like sun, like beautiful things. When he desired to hear the rishis here, hymning about himself, he developed the ears. That developed the organ of hearing, the object of sound, the deity, dick. Then, when he desired to experience hardness, softness, lightness, heaviness, heat and cold, he developed the skin, the seat of organ of touch. There, hair resembling tree grew together with the deity of oushadi, medicinal herbs. The power of contact with organs of touch residing in the skin possesses now spread all over the skin within and without. Desiring to do many works, the cosmic person developed arms. In the arms, the faculty of strength, its deity is Indra, Ajay. Arms, God is Indra. And their object of the power of grasping depends on the deity and the faculty of strength originated. When he desired to move, legs are originated. Jagna arose as the presiding deity of the legs. By moving with the legs, man is able to go get the ingredients from offering in the Jagna. When the cosmic person desired offsprings and joy, then sexuality and its expressions, the sex organs arose, as did its presiding deity, Prajapati. Depending on these, the joy of sexual indulgence arose. When he desired to excrete the in undigested residue of the food eaten, the excretory faculty came into being. Related to it is the organ of Enas, and his presiding deity is the Mitra, and controlled by both in the excretion of the facial matter. When he desired to pass from one body to another, the navel came into existence. There, the vital energy called Apana and the presiding deity death originated. When he desired to have food and drink, the stomach, the intestine, as also rivers and oceans came into existence. Depending on these are satisfaction and nourishment. So, 38th verse, when he began to think of his inherent power, Atma Maya, the heart came into an exist eh? the heart came into existence to feel that from that came the faculty of mind and the deity moon and the object of fancy resulting in desires so it is all creation <laughs> how it came when he desired he want to see something so the eyes came he want to see this he created the object came and object, how they relate together, that also came. So it is all meaning he desires everything. And by his will, only everything happened. I think that's Brahma. Brahma uh, from Brahma, it is coming to uh, further details. Brahma does not do alone. He has his departmental people. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. So I thought it was... Yeah, but these are all, he's saying that it is a cosmic play, one has become many. That's why he say Adi Daibik. He created the devotas. He created the human. He created the material object. And he, as energy, has entered into all. So different deities, how they are coming, it is giving a description in that line, that everything is coming by his will, and he will to have to smell something, so nose came. Nose will not do, sense organ of smell, that came. Then object was created, which will be giving the smell. So it is all. That means if we look at Vedantic perspective, everything is Brahman. The fact that we are oh. sitting here is Brahman's will. Yeah, Brahman's will, there is, if you, uh, if you say Brahman's will, 
We say that word, it is all that, nothing but that. We see in diversity, but it is all the one manifesting. When it goes to unmanifest, it is the ocean. When it is manifested, that's also the ocean. But we don't look at the ocean, we see only the waves. And when we see the waves, we see the ripples and waves and bu bubbles and foams, limitless, infinite. And how did that come? Oh, these are the cause, efficient cause, material cause, they're explanation. But this is for us, those who will be satisfied with this argument, they will believe it. Oma, here is Nishan putting a strong question. His question is a very heavy question. He says, when Ramakrishna says to Ishan, Oh Brahmin, dive deep. What did he mean? What does it mean to become absorbed in the name as opposed to the mechanical japa like Ishan was doing all day long? I think, yes, you are correct. We also do the japa. No, we, we regularly sit for meditation in the morning, evening, we are trying, no? Are we diving deep? Ramakrishna said, like a float. People are fishing. So long the float is there, up. A fish has not caught it. That means, are you diving, really catching the fish? If you do, the float will do, will not be floating in the surface, it will dive deep. That means dive deep into the name and form and from name and form to him who is Satchitananda. Ananda, Ananda. Huh? God as Ananda. So this is the, what we read today also same. Whatever we are seeing, his foundation is that Satchitananda. Satchitananda willed and then it become Narayana. Narayana was lying in a created in a ocean. It's all then creation theory is coming. But fundamental point is that that absolute one is the question. But so long we are in the body, we need somebody to understand who has created this. So we bring that Lord who have created this universe. By his will, everything is going on. So this is a wonderful way of diving deep. As you are saying, we can look to the trees and plants and human being now think who is behind, who is behind, who is behind, and then go back to Ishwara, the one Lord, or dive deep, Satchidananda. No problem. Then second point, Shaktavadvaita also, city has Ichcha Shakti, Chiti has Ichcha Shakti, however if consciousness plays or creates, that too is a type of change. How can unchanging God create a changing world and still remain unchanging? Yes, that is a big question. How can do that? It happens. The ocean. Ocean is the still ocean. And sometimes it is wavy. So wavy ocean and still ocean, does it make any distinction? It is only playfulness and non-playful. Uh, Ramakrishna gave the example the snake is just coiled up and snake is wriggling, in his wriggling motion. Is the two different thing? It is only one. So people go, because we cannot see in this name and form that Chiti Shakti or the conscious entity, in that Ichcha Shakti, when you, you know, these are all technical terms, Ichcha Shakti means Shakti that created the Ichha, desire, to see, to hear, to eat, to see, to food, to touch, taste, all these Ichha. This Ichha means these desires are a part of that cosmic Satchidananda self. Therefore, it matters little. If it plays, it is much joyful. Ramakrishna said, not to be sugar, but to taste the sugar. It is tasting. God everywhere, God everything, and I'm testing, I'm seeing, I'm experiencing, I'm touching, I'm doing all these things. So, and the unchanging has, if you say uh, absolute, Sakto philosophy says, change and unchanging are the same thing. Shiva, Shakti are one. You can see the Shiva aspect, you can see the Shakti aspect. And we live in Shakti, under the, under the power of Shakti. 
we are breathing, we are seeing, we are eating, we are walking in the level of the Shakti. But this Shakti is not independent of Brahman. Neither Brahman is independent of Shakti. You cannot think of the ocean without any substance. Uh, or, but so long we see I am there, the entire creation is there. And creation means the expression of one into many. So one and many are not two. We, we see in ignorance, but it is the play of the same one. So remaining unchanging, the creation change can come. That's why Vedanta always says it is your mistake. And in Sakta philosophy they call it is mother's play. God is, uh, but also. Who is creating? He himself changing, and his creation is also changing. That act. Is not creating, true. Is also unchanging. Uh, God in, uh, here, God. If you say the real sense, God, God never changes, and the snake never, the rope never changes, but all this change is coming because of your ignorance in Vedanta, and Bhakti school will say it is Mahamaya mother playing. Mother playing the drama. There is nothing like a magician. Magician starts magic. There is nothing in that in the hollow drum. And they show us that hey, see, there is nothing inside. And then you see, put it here and cover with a piece of cloth and ask you, what do you want? Come anyone, what do you want? You say, I want one mango. And he puts his hand and brings out a mango. Huh? Yes. It is true or not, it is a play. It is a, it is a trick. So it is called Mahamaya's play. So these are all technical language, but understand it is only one manifesting as many, so long we are manifested. When you are not in manifested state, you go to Samadhi, then this world is no more creation. Who will say it is created? Where is that creation? And this question does not come. Another question. Today's evangelist Christian preachers exhort us, strive for God's favor to be all that we can be and have an abundant life. Vedanta, on the other hand, seems to encourage us towards renunciation and self-denial. Could you speak to this discrepancy? You know, uh, unless we get physical comfort, we cannot understand the spiritual comfort. Those who have never enjoyed a good food, a good stay, good luxurious life, what they will understand what is in heavenly joy? And what they will understand the infinite joy? So when the evangelists say, come, God will give this wealth, prosperity, that's the meaning. And there are people who need that. But ultimately, when you go to God, then who cares about your wealth and prosperity? All drops of even even those people who are striving to reach God, they will lose everything in God. And so much is there in God, you don't need anything else. It's God is all joy, all love. So there is apparent contradiction, but there is no discrepancy. Vedanta from the very beginning says your goal is too high. So give up this, give up that, give up that, give up that. But Another school is there, all these schools of thought. You go one step, have it, and then renounce. Try for higher, you re renounce the lower. We always do that. Whenever we go to a higher level, we give up the lower level. Whenever get a, we, we get a job, as my common example I give, if I as, as having a job of 40,000, huh? so, and I was working hard in 40,000, I was happy. But I got a chance to have 60,000. So getting, holding to 60,000 job, am I losing anything? I'm not losing. I've already gone there. I'm going a little higher. And Vedanta says, no, 40,000, no 60,000, no million, no billion. You are the total of everything. So if that is the goal, you automatically give up all these things. It is not giving up. It is achieving something higher. Yeah, that's the point. Okay? So thank you. Here we end our class. We will meet you again 7.30 in our Shanti Gita class. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Hi.
हरि ओम तत्सत श्री राम कृष्णार्पणमस्तु